Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. With James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? An incredible fish. And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. With Pat McSherry. All right, what a fish. Andy Bioko. Wow. Get the colors on this fish. And Mike Anselmo. Man, he's bumping. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Good morning, everyone. James Holst here with In-Depth Outdoors. Now, if you watched last week's show, uh, you know that we made the long drive out to Idaho to fish with Andy Fiolka and got in on some huge perch. But after spending over 50 hours in the truck to make that trip, this week I'm starting to think a lot about time out in the boat. Uh, all the warmer temperatures we're starting to see now and what's forecasted in the near future leads me to believe that it's about time to get those boats out. Now, we're not done with ice fishing yet, but trust me, open water is coming soon and for those that watch our show regularly we've got something completely different for you today uh, last fall we made the trip up to pasha lake to fish with chad thompson now what i love about this area is you can make it as simple or as complicated as you want and on today's show we are taking things back to ultra simple pocket full of jigs a couple fishing rods and a very basic portable piece of electronics. That's all we've got going for us today. And we're gonna go fish a lake called Onaman Lake. Great walleye population. And why we wanted to do this show was pretty simple. Uh, we spend a lot of time here focused on teaching people how to catch fish when the fishing is difficult. Onaman's a completely different story. This is a lake where anyone can go with just basic skills and you're gonna catch a lot of fish. And like I said, nothing could be more simple. So if you're interested in hearing a story about a great destination where anybody can catch fish, stick around. It's Chad Thompson and I, fishing walleyes on Lake Onaman, here today on In-Depth Outdoors. This is the Pasha Lake guide that we've hired for the season. He seems reliable. He's pretty good. Questionable work ethic at times when he has to stop and eat, but. I'm a little surprised. You got quite the setup here, man. Yeah, this is kind of nice. And 16 foot boats, 17 foot boats. Mm -hmm. You're gonna drive everywhere today and uh, take off my fish? Yes. Bait my hooks? Yes. I love it. Nice. near the boat. That looks like a good one. The walleye? Yeah. Perfect. I'll show you what they look like. Appreciate it. It's a nice oh, fish. That is a big, oh my. That's not a bad start. No, it's not. Eighth ounce VMC Moon Eye Jig and a B Fish and Tackle Paddle Tail. <laughs> Pulsar, <laughs> excuse me. What's that about a 22, 23 inch walleye? I have a ruler on my side of the boat. I'll just measure it. Come here. It's gonna melly scoopy if I have to. There we go. Oh, look at the head on that thing. <laughs> They're so cooperative. <laughs> Beautiful fish. No, it's longer than 22, Chad. Yep. I'll put that one up against the bump here. Have no interest in 
keeping that fish. Let's see. You have a 25 inches long. 25 inches. And I think during our discussions coming out here, you said that you'd be happy with anything plus 24? Any fish over 25 inches in my book is a big walleye. Okay. See you later, fish. Not a bad way to start. Not at all. I dig it. I have no idea how deep the water is here. Mm -hmm. Just kept working it back. Yep. It is. We're probably in about 20 feet of water here. Gotcha. I'm back at it. Oh. This is the second time we've done a small boat trip up here with you. Mm -hmm. uh, we did uh, Bay of Pigs pike fishing one spring mm -hmm. when uh, Nipigon was not very friendly. No. That, that turned out pretty well, too. That did turn out really well. We caught a lot of big fish that trip. This is kind <clears throat> of a reunion of sorts, right? Don't get all misty-eyed with me. I'm trying not to. <laughs> Skeeter Boat Center is now a full-service Warrior Boats dealer, offering the complete line of Warrior Boats, all covered by reliable Yamaha Outboards. With dealerships located in Ramsey, Minnesota and Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, Skeeter Boat Center carries more Warrior Boat models in stock than any other Warrior Boat dealer. No matter which Warrior model is right for you, you'll receive the same attention to detail and service after the sale that made Skeeter Boat Center the number one Skeeter dealer by volume in the Midwest. For the best selection of fiberglass fishing boats and unmatched service, stop in or visit us online at SkeeterBoatCenter.com. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. This winter, set a trap for your next trophy with iFish Pro. Ideal for all species, iFish Pro is an innovative fishing system that allows an angler to use their favorite rod and reel instead of trying to manage the fish hand over hand. Oh, right Complete your ice fishing arsenal with iFish Pro, tactical ice gear that puts the fight back into tip up fishing. Look at that. Find oh, iFish Pro online at iFishPro.com or at your favorite sporting goods retailer. There's a fish. That a boy. Oh, I'm gonna drag set to. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's a walleye. Mm -hmm. You caught me digging through plastics over here, bud. <laughs> you just break off? No, I just wanted to change. Change colors. A little scrapper. Man, they are fat fish. They are big fish here. Whoa. Look at that. Oyster shell? Cool. Mm -hmm. Not a bad guy. I think there's fish here. And you as missed, you, you just missed one? Yep, I did. Yep. And as you said, uh, the sun wasn't gonna make a difference as soon as that fog burned off. I mean, I was worried because you know, we're fishing shallow, we're fishing clear water. I figured the sun would be a bad thing. Yeah. You said it wouldn't be. All right. I will say this, the sun feels better. It feels a lot better. Fish on. Nice. Nice big walleye. That's a walleye. Yeah. And I'm happy. Come here, you. I don't know where he's going. <laughs> I, I actually don't think he's that big. I can just kind of feel the, the, the tails, you know, the tail shake. Yep. He doesn't feel like a big fish, he's just spunky. Oh no, that's a nice fish, James. Oh, I'm not I'm not saying he's not a bad good okay. fish. I'm just I was at, initially thinking he was gonna be huge. This day, just the day itself is like a gift. Mm -hmm. Out here catching walleyes like this, this is cool. Come here, fish. 
Oh yeah. That's a nice fish. Absolutely it is. Beautiful colors. Thick. All right, see you later, fish. Oh, nice catch. All right. Two in a so, row for me, two casts in a row. The, one was oh, a, there's a nice fish. One was an eight inch pike and the other one was a walleye. <laughs> oh. So I think we're starting to see a pattern. Yeah, sun comes out, that's good. Mm -hmm. You said it was. Well, this one's kind of dictating the show here. Oh. He's the boss, huh? Mm -hmm. Not the biggest fish in Onaman, but still put up a nice, he, he just throttled that thing when he hit it. I don't think the pattern right now is color of plastics because I'm fishing uh, one extreme and you're on the other. I'm fishing like a firecracker, you got a white. Yeah. I was just casting out, I just got lost that bit. Oh, there's one. <laughs> he just gave up and hammered that thing. Right there in six feet of water. Yep. You were making it really difficult to stick with the plastics. What did I give you? Two more fish? That's one of two? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Another nice one. Definitely nice fish. Forget it. I give up. Not a bad guy. All right, we'll get this one back. I think there's some more here. We seem to be right off that edge right there. You are uh, kicking my hind end, so I'm uh, putting pride aside and I'm rigging up a minnow. We're getting this recorded, right? There he is. <laughs> How deep isn't it? It's like six feet? Ten now. Ten now. We dropped off. Gotcha. Yeah. Beefy. Not a bad guy at all. We just need another six inches on him, huh? Forty of these guys. There's a fish. Bye. What just happened there? Is that a uh, carp or what is that? That's not a little pumpkin like you've been catching. Wow. I got some bigger head shakes. I noticed when you set the hook, your rod goes <laughs> like that really fast. <laughs> Mine's whoa, now what I do is because I oh wow that is a nice fish. I tell you, I only do quality. I was gonna say as a good host, what I do is I bring the bigger fish in, uh -huh. and then I allow the guest to catch the bigger fish. That is a load of baloney. Mm. He's not hooked good. I can't count him in the boat yet. Come here. Oh yeah, there we go. You know what? Wow. It's not the active, aggressive, you know, presentation that we kind of hoped for. Yes. But if we can uh, catch a fish like that every five minutes in conditions like this, I'll take it. Yeah, 100%. That's, uh, well, you got that big one earlier. Yep. There we go. Very cool. Oh, see you later, walleye. Gone. I need a minnow. Allow me to get you a minnow. Thank you. You're gonna give me this, what, are you gonna stickle back? <laughs> I was gonna do it, but that was too obvious. <laughs> oh, what happened? I just got ripped. All right. I mean, don't feel bad about missing that fish, because I'm sure it's <laughs> just a small one. Right. Markham's new pocket-sized handheld underwater cameras, the Recon 5 and 5 Plus, use a five-inch color display to deliver superior screen detail and employ a combination of dark water LED and infrared lighting to punch through the darkness. The Recon 5 Plus adds a built-in DVR and on-screen display for critical information, previously only available on full-sized underwater viewing systems. This winter, see what you've been missing with a Recon from Markham Technologies, the undisputed leader in underwater cameras. Everything you'd expect from a premium quality fish house and so much more. Glacier combines superior craftsmanship and premium quality materials to produce a comfortable and enjoyable mobile base camp for your next outdoor adventure. Available in a variety of models, a Glacier Ice House offers more standard features, more usable space, and a better fit and finish than the competition. Visit our website at GlacierIceHouse.com to find a dealer near you and see why a Glacier Fish House is the ultimate way to play. At Aluma, we're in it for the long haul. 
That's why we make the longest lasting, most rugged trailers on the road. Flatbeds, bike haulers, tilt trailers, and enclosed. If you have a lot to move, we've got your way to move it. Our lightweight aluminum trailers will handle even your heaviest loads. At Aluma, we are right behind you with an industry-leading five-year warranty. Because every trip and every load is valued. Skeeter Boat Center is now a full-service Warrior Boats dealer, offering the complete line of Warrior Boats, all covered by reliable Yamaha outboards. With dealerships located in Ramsey, Minnesota and Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, Skeeter Boat Center carries more Warrior Boat models in stock than any other Warrior Boat dealer. No matter which Warrior model is right for you, you'll receive the same attention to detail and service after the sale that made Skeeter Boat Center the number one Skeeter dealer by volume in the Midwest. For the best selection of fiberglass fishing boats and unmatched service, stop in or visit us online at SkeeterBoatCenter.com. I know when you've been trying to get me to come up here and fish this with you, you're always talking about June and September. Mm -hmm. uh, does this bite slow up midsummer? It, you know, everything's relative. You know, if there's any time where you could consider it slower, mm -hmm. um, yeah, in midsummer, high skies on a day like today, you might not catch as many fish. Okay. Way out there on the beginning of the cast, buddy. Nice. I don't know yet. We'll see. I can't believe how well these walleyes are biting in these conditions. Let's see. Is it a shore lunch chad fish? No, it's a James fish. Hmm. <laughs> Seems James standards have gone down a little bit. A little bit. I was going to say it was a James fish, but no matter what size it was. <laughs> Come here, fish. Oh. oh, yeah. Yeah, he's probably only about 18 inches. Crushed it though. Sometimes I'd rather catch an 18 inch incher that crushes it versus a 25 incher that just kind of lethargically <laughs> just nips Slurps at it. it up. Line is off. There we go. See you later, fish. Wow, that did that minnow no good. So when you come out here and fish these lakes, I mean, you're out here all the time. What kind of general patterns do you look for? If somebody else is going to come here, how would you tell them to approach these bodies of water? Really, their bread and butter is just a jig and a minnow. Mm -hmm. You put a quarter ounce jig on and a minnow, and that's a lethal killing machine up here. It really is. I know you can get fancy, but one of the things you got to consider about is these smaller boats. Mm -hmm. You can't pack in a lot of gear into them, so you have to take that into consideration. And a jig and a minnow works 90% of the time. Gotcha. Presentations, I mean, or excuse me, locations, you're primarily just working shoreline. Yeah, well each body, we fish so many different bodies of water, so each one is kind of unique in and of itself. But like on today, we're working shoreline and boulders, and that's where the fish are at. If we're on a different lake, we might be in 35 feet of water sure. over mud. Gotcha. Well, on uh, them so shallow, I mean, what were you saying, the average depth is like seven feet? Mm -hmm. Massive body of water. And that's why it's such a walleye factory. Yeah. There's just no unproductive water. There's not that great big mass of 100 foot plus deep water. Right. Just a big bowl with lots of rock. Lots of rock. Lots of fish too. Ha <laughs> Right to below the boat. That's a nice one. <laughs> oh, you're too big, aren't you, fish? Yes, you are. Just awesome fish. I would imagine that because it's such a shallow body of water and so fertile, that's why these fish chunk out like this so much. It's saw, just the premier forage. Lots of white fish. Tula bees in here? Yep. Oh, what happened there, bubblegum? Mm hmm. I think we found a jig color of choice. You Ooh. have taken the elite again. That's a nice fish. <laughs> Wow. Is that going to do Lake Onaman proud? Yes. Oh, I've had them bigger. Well, not, not this trip you haven't. That's, That's a nice rod fish. bender. That's a nice fish. You can tell uh, when it's a better fish, you uh, set the hook and it doesn't really move that much. Right. Nicely done, sir. It never gets old. No. It just never gets old. No, it's fun trying, but never quite get there. Right. Bye, fish. I want to catch another fish. You got him? Yes, yes, I do. Boy, they, uh, you know, 
few drifts ago, they were just in here just crushing baits, but now they're just dip. Yep. Nice fish. Mm -hmm. There's another one. Ooh, we got a double. Oh. You know, that's the one thing we haven't done today, have yeah. we? First double? First double. I think this one's turning the boat. Later fish. Mm -hmm. The walleye thump. I'll take a double. You know, other than those, there was a couple fish we caught earlier when we were leaving the islands. We come to this spot, we've caught all these fish within like a 50 yard stretch of the first shoreline we've fished. Yep. Another one. That one took off to the left. Did he? What's that tell you? I don't know. <laughs> Just an observation. Markham Technologies unleashes GPS with the release of the RT9, the first to combine sonar, underwater camera, and Navionics mapping in a 9-inch ruggedized touchscreen tablet. Built on the Android operating system, the Wi-Fi-enabled RT9 can be used as a standalone tablet or snap into the cradle or performance pack for unmatched portability. Ice Electronics the way they were meant to be. Sonar, GPS, underwater camera, one unit. Experience the RT9 from Markham Technologies. Lithium Laser and Lithium Chipper from Strikemaster deliver power on demand with the push of a button and an industry-leading 50-volt lithium-ion battery. Reach for the Lithium Laser if you need unmatched hole-punching speed or opt for the Lithium Chipper if you need the durability of chipper blades for opening old holes or drilling in dirty ice. No matter which auger is right for the way you fish, reach for a Strikemaster Lithium, the electric auger with power to spare. So one of the things that I'm always kind of challenged about, James, is when we fish out of these small boats, especially in the remote lakes, is we have to pack light. We just have to pack light. That's the nature of how we fish up here. What's your best two cents on what a guy should bring in here in a tackle box? Oh man, I just keep it super basic. I mean, I think if a guy had, um, you know, as many jigs in one eighth and one quarter ounce as they felt they were gonna need, bright colors, gold, um, Throw in some shad wraps, like some size five, six, seven shad wraps if they want to do some casting up to the shore, and maybe just a couple of jerk baits, you know, like a, a shadow wrap or something like that in case uh, they want to go chase pike up in the reeds, and you've basically got it covered. I think I'm going to get a sunburn today. Uh -oh. Oh. Somebody's getting the hot rod. I'm just in fuego. Mm -hmm. In fuego. <laughs> I've learned all my Spanish from ESPN. <laughs> oh no, that's a good one. Can I? That's not patented, is it? No, it's not patented. Man, these are nice fish. <laughs> Pretty much a kissing cousin to the one you had, Chad. Um, air fish. There we go. Super nice. I believe we're. Uh, well on our way to just wearing out this spot and pouring <laughs> through a bucket that was absolutely full of minnows. And uh, you know, Chad basically promised that we'd be looking at a much better average class of fish here on Onaman, and he's absolutely been right. I fished a lot of places up here in Canada, and certainly there's others where you can get fish of this quality, but uh, most places where you're able to catch 50 or 75 or 100 fish a day, you're going to be looking at you know, 15, 16, 17 inch fish. We've poured through a lot of fish today that were on the plus side of 20 inches, which is a lot of fun. That was a beautiful hit. Hmm. Pink bubble gum. Pink bubble gum, that's a nice fish. That is a nice fish. I did the hop hop drag technique. Mm often imitated, rarely executed properly. Yes. Wow. That's a little 20. Mm -hmm. And he just came up and hammered that thing. Those bigger fish usually do. <laughs> that one is representing 
Lake Onaman Well. Low scale representation, but. Understood. Still getting there nonetheless. Bye, fish. There he is. Boy, look at that. Bringing our average down. He's only about 17, 18 inches oh, long. Oh, double, James, double. Another one, huh? Double, oh, I just lost my We've had a few doubles today, but mm -hmm. we have not converted a lot of them. You know, we've had three or four opportunities here in the last hour, but we usually lose one of them. That really goes with how aggressive the fish aren't. We're catching a ton of fish, but this is not that uh, classic onaman bite where they're just slamming baits. They are gumming, licking, chewing gently on minnows right now. And that means a lot of these fish are not hooked deep. Deep enough to get caught though. That's a pretty good drift. Yeah, this is perfect. Just a little hint of wind goes a long way. I didn't even know he was on there. That's the exact same thing my last one did. I thought I was hitting ground, but I think he was pecking it. He's <laughs> chewing on it? Yep. That's a big fish. No, that's your biggest fish of the day, bud. Yep. He's gonna flop, he's gonna flop, he's gonna flop. You got him. I got you him. got him. Ooh. That's a 24 inch fish. Yep, he's actually bigger than I thought he was. Yep. And he helped me release. Didn't do your minnows any good though. No. That's a super nice fish. Mm -hmm. So what I've been playing with is actually just hopping the jig and then just dragging it. Mm -hmm. Cause it depends on the fish. Some of them are super aggressive. But a Most lot of, of them, them are not. Yeah, a lot of them have just been pecking at it. Bye, fish. Bye, fish. I love when they do that. Yeah, this is more of a little twitch once in a while, but mostly it's just a drag. So that brings us to the end of today's episode. This, for me, uh, really got my juices flowing, excited about open water. We're not done with ice fishing yet. In fact, next week, we're gonna be out on the ice, uh, central Wisconsin, running around with Adam Rasmussen. But if you're looking for a great open water destination, give Chad Thompson a call. Pasha Lake Cabins, whether you're targeting walleyes, pike, brook trout, or lake trout, there's a lake within about 30 minutes of Pasha Lake Cabins that has exactly what you're looking for. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.